Hi, my name is Kevin Spitka. I'm working in the laboratory for marine and protective coatings, and I'm happy to present one of our new deformers, Book 7089. The vast majority of paint properties depend very much on the end application. For example, for cold coating material, since it will be deformed later, a really nice flexible performance is necessary, or in comparison to this for merino protective coatings, a really hard surface is necessary. Or sometimes the coating have to be quite thick and uh, prevent for sagging. Um, in other applications, it's quite necessary to have a thin viscosity so that the coating levels out nicely. But even though that coatings materials are very different, they're united in one thing. Foam is never wanted. Sure, in one or the other areas, you may be more or less sensitive regarding this topic, but you never really ignore foam. And that's why I'm talking today about a new deformer. Before we talk about the new Book 7089, the new silicon deformer, a few thoughts on why foam appears. If you have ever attended a Book seminar, you will know the following sentence quite well. Pure liquids do not foam. When air is incorporated in a pure liquid, the air bubbles rise to the surface and burst. Depending on the viscosity, it is a more slow or fast physical reaction. You see the equation there. It's also uh, known as the Stokes law. Um, and the whole equation is a little bit more complicated, but it sums up what is important when it comes to deforming or foam in pure liquid. The velocity of rising of the air bubbles depends on two things. One part is the viscosity of the liquid, and the other thing is the bubble radius, so how big or small are the bubbles. Means that a very small bubble in a thick liquid takes much longer time to rise than a large bubble in a thin liquid like water. However, foam stabilization only takes place when that's not only pure liquid, but also a substance that stabilizes air in the air fluid or air liquid interface. And the more of these surfactants are present, the more and the more stable is the foam, as you can see in the small video. So there's a need for a second thing like a surfactant, wetting dispersing additive, and so on. The more surfactant-like structures are present, the more and stronger are foam bubbles, and the foam is therefore stabilized. It's a pity that, especially for protective coatings, all criteria for a nice foam stabilizations are given. Here a few examples. Um, in general, it sounds like con contradiction to protect steel for corrosion by using a water-based coating. In order to achieve this behavior, many different additive surfactants are needed in water-based epoxy systems to prevent steel from rusting. For example, wetting dispersing additives for pigments or surfactants to cover the surface. So there are many surfactant active, surface active substances which you unfortunately cannot avoid in these kind of systems. In addition to this, all the protective coatings are usually um, very high built, high viscosity, and they are, they are also quite fast drying. And in addition to all of these things, they are also airless applied, means there's a lot of foam and foam stabilization for water-based epoxy systems. And there is a need for a new deformer, especially for these demanding coating systems. And here we are, the answer, the solution is VIP 7089, a silicon-based deformer specially developed for water-based epoxy systems. A deforming, an anti-deforming for the whole coating material. Let's have a look at some results. Here's an example, a water-based two-pack epoxy system. If you do, if you perform a cross-section into a plight a panel, you can see how much air is inside of the coating material. The surface may not look so foamy, but due to the high viscosity, 
a lot of air is entrapped and very stable trapped in the paint material. And in the lower picture, you can see a close up and there's hardly, hardly to improve by using a standard deformer. And this is why book 7089 was developed a much better performance in these kind of coating systems for entire, for the whole film um, performing. Especially when it comes to protective coating, the foam inside of the paint matrix is really problematic because this entrapped air will lead to weak points, which is bad for corrosion protection. Because where foam, where a foam bubble is inside of the coating material, this foam bubble can be filled with some corrosive media like water or salt, and it performs later very weak in corrosion testing. Here, the same formulation as you've seen before, after a few hours in the neutral salt spray test, the same coating, just with another kind of deformer leading to different degree of rusting when you do some corrosion resistance test. Since you need a deformer anyway, it's worth to take a look at book 7089, deformer which maybe improves your salt spray resistance and your degree at, of rusting. Apart from the salt spray test, there are other test methods to test the corrosion protection. In the past, we have established a, a kind of electrochemical impedance spectroscopy in our laboratory, um, a fast method to test the coating material. Here's a short video of the test setup. So, you measure the impedance, means the resistance of the coating in alternating current at different frequencies. You may ask yourself why we measure different frequencies. So coating behaves like a capacitor at high frequencies and a resistor at low frequencies. And by performing this uh, measurement, the impedance at different frequencies, you can give some different statements about what's going on in the coating. Here are a few results of the uh, already known formulation. If there are many pores inside of the coating, a lot of bubbles, it's more or less like a sponge where a lot of different electrolytes can differ into the coating materials. And therefore, a lot of electrolyte, which um, is very bad for corrosion protection, um, the impedance therefore is also lower. Here you see the results at low frequency at 0.1. Hertz. Um, and the longer the solution can differ inside of the coating material, the lower the impedance will be after storage and therefore the weaker the anti-corrosion properties. And here you see the very nice results of VUX 7089 even after four days of testing. Good deforming is one thing that characterizes VUX 7089, but on the market, even in our portfolio, are so many different strong deformers. But all of these strong deformer may have one drawback. A strong deformer may tend to cratering. And for protective coatings, it doesn't matter if you have foam or a crater, because both will create a failure in your protective system. And here we come to one additional benefit of book 7089. If you look through the coating film with transmitted light, you see on the right picture, you see nothing, which is good because you're not seeing any craters or any light transmitting from, from the lower part. With a standard deformer, a strong deformer, you will see some orange peel or thick craters, which will destroy your protection. And we also see an additional benefit when it comes to book 7089, it's the topic of adhesion. So, well knowing that we're using a silicon based deformer, some may ask if we have some drawbacks when it comes to adhesion or overcoatability. Here, in this example, we performed the so called pull off adhesion test. The book 7089 or the standard deformer is added in the epoxy mid coat. A dark blue bar means there's a zinc rich epoxy coat and the mid coat was applied over this. And then the light blue bar, you see the epoxy mid coat and an acrylic top coat was applied over the mid coat. And in both 
times to see that book 7089, even though it's a silicon-based deforma, there's no negative impact on adhesion or overcoatability. They're the same results as with the blank sample without any deforma. Yes, we do have a plenty of other deformers in our portfolio. And here, I would like to give you a brief view how our book 7089, the new deformer, lines up in our portfolio for water-based deformer. This may also help you when you find that maybe the 7089 is too strong or too weak in your particular testing system. You may have a look on this chart to check if we have other opportunities for your special development. For which application we recommend our book 7089? Yeah, for all end users where the mentioned challenges need to be solved, which means especially for protective coatings and floor coatings where water-based two-pack epoxy systems are state-of-the-art technology. And of course, this is an interesting choice for all other water-based systems where you're aiming for nice deforming while maintaining good optical properties. So, a few words on the end. There's one thing to remember. Book 7089 is a new 100% deformer, which is particularly developed for water-based anti-corrosion epoxy systems. It provides good deforming by maintaining very nice surface quality, and this even under challenging application conditions. Many thanks for your participation.